My name is Stephanie Lee. I live and work in Queens, New York. My work is inspired by a Korean folk art called Minhwa. Minhwa is a colorful painting that was popular during the Joseon Dynasty of Korea. It was an everyday art, widely enjoyed and painted by common people. I've always been fond of the bright colors and positive energy of Minhwa and impressed by the fact that these paintings were created and shared throughout many worlds. Despite the hardships they were facing, the people of Korea kept a positive attitude and continued seeking hope and happiness through art. The objects depicted in Minhwa symbolize wishes for well-being, such as good luck, health, wealth, and love. I also believe the essence of life is seeking one's happiness and being the benefit of all mankind at the same time. I reinterpret Minhwa by putting modern objects in traditional settings. I cover all genres of Minhwa, such as the tiger and magpie, flowers and birds, and books and things. In the Cabinet of Desire series, I place luxurious modern goods in traditional bookshelf settings to symbolize how the human desire for well-being transcends time and era. In this painting, Beautiful Lady Smile, I recreated Munjado, one of the genres in Minhwa that depicts Confucian virtues in the form of letters. I used both Korean and English characters with contemporary elements to address the issue of female gender identity and equality. Diamonds represents pure goodness and symbolize the positive human spirit that overcame life's hardships and obstacles in my work. They are the result of carbon atoms being placed under extreme pressure and heat. Instead of being destroyed, the carbon became something beautiful and strong that reflects light on others. By integrating Korean tradition with New York life, traditional and contemporary, East and West, material and ideal all coexist in my work with embedded good wishes. As our ancestors did, I wish happiness to you and your loved ones through my paintings. Hello, I'm Julia Kwan, and I'm an artist currently based in the Washington, D.C. area. I create interpretive bojagi, Korean object wrapping cloth historically created since the Joseon Dynasty, to comment on the objectification of Asiatic female bodies, to challenge a notion of authenticity, and to examine the complexities of constructing an identity within the context of globalism, cultural hybridity, and intersectionality. I also explore community and personal relationship building through various collaborative and socially engaged projects. My project, You Banners, Same Old Struggles, was created using gold safety pens on white Korean silk. The work is in conversation both with history and art history. The work was created during the 2018 U.S. midterm elections and pays homage to Glenn Ligon's artwork that references a civil rights protest sign. While considering notions about symbols, activism, allyship, power, and privilege, the work comments on the fact that we continue to struggle to create a more just and equitable society for all. My project, Unapologetically Asian, was created using cotton canvas, muslin, and one-of-a-kind Korean silk patchwork. I embrace my ethnic identity to confront the rise in anti-Asian racism during the COVID-19 pandemic. Through my work, I aim to share my personal experiences as a Korean American woman to position us to consider the experiences of other marginalized communities that are disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as systemic racism. Hello, my name is Leah Ju, and I'm a painter based in Connecticut. I've been working with fabric dealing with the ideas of concealing and revealing and my Bujaki paintings are a series of still lives of tied bundles and during the quarantine I had a really hard time concentrating on large substantial paintings so I started to make a bunch of these little ones, these babies. Titles can be important so I gave all the babies unique names based on their character, the color, the shape and the way it's knotted. Each title ends with the word seki, which means offspring. 
Seki has a wide range of tone depending on how it's used. For instance, if a grandma says kyo in seki, it means precious cute baby with a lot of affection. But if you throw the word dog in front of seki, it becomes a really bad word. I thought about these titles and I realized much of it gets lost in translation. But as I get lost in thinking and translating, I also find comfort. The Bojagi series began after I received a hanbok I had ordered online for my daughter. When I opened the box, I found a beautifully wrapped bundle of fabric and it was carefully tied in a knot waiting to be unwrapped. There's always a small thrill in opening a wrapped gift, although you may already know what's inside. But the anticipation of untying and revealing is almost as exciting as actually seeing what's inside. There's a Korean tradition of wrapping gifts and storing things away in remnants of fabric. The tradition of gift wrapping in fabric is shared in many cultures, and the selection of fabric, its color, patterns, and the presentation are all a reflection of the giver to the receiver. When I choose a fabric, I think of it as creating a character or a portrait. Some are bright, bold, and dramatic, commanding attention, and sometimes it's humble and quiet like it is with the burlap, weighed down with its content, worn from handling and age. There is the tale of the contest between two ancient Greek painters, Parasius and Zeusus. Zeusus painted grapes so realistic, they say the birds try to come and peck at it. When Zeusus tried to pull back the drapery to see Parasius' painting, he realized that that was the painting. I love this story about the power of painting and the power of skills. And for me, painting fabric is the ultimate test of skills. As it was with Parasius' story, in my work, the cover is the content. My work embodies the complex hybridization of American Korean culture and my experience navigating a multicultural environment, which prompted me to embark on an exploration of the multiplicity of Americanness. I often merge Korean artifacts, ritualistic objects, and traditional ceramic techniques, and morph abstract sculptural forms into complex narratives. My humanized depictions on historical forms explores intersectionality amongst the immigrant and BIPOC community here in the United States. My most recent work is a critical inquiry on colonial ideology, expressing ethnology, the stigmatization and ownership of indigenous artifacts, and its interlude to social progress.